Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Wherever and whenever you are around the world, thanks for making this webinar part of your day. I'm Jeff Rasmussen, host of our Legacy Family Tree webinars, broadcasting to you live from Surprise, Arizona. And if you can't already tell, I'm extremely excited about today's special episode of Watch Jeff Live Cemeteries. This is our fifth in the series of the, uh, the so-called Jeff Reality Shows, where we've previously learned about death records, obituaries, marriage records, and census records. And today we'll focus on cemeteries. So hopefully by now you've had a chance to print the picture of the tombstone so you can follow along. If not, the link is shown here on the screen, so you can type that into your browser. Or for our live viewers, you should have the link in your webinar control panel found in the upper right of your screen. And by the way, uh, special thanks to legacy support members, uh, Sherry and Brian, for being with me today to help answer the questions that you type in. So using your control panel, feel free to type your questions, and uh, we'll all do our very best to answer as many as we can. So here's our agenda today. Uh, of course, uh, the main presentation, and, and following that, we'll have some fantastic door prizes, our traditional thank you gift, announce our upcoming webinars, and then we'll continue on into our Q&A session. But before we get going with, uh, with Legacy, let me help set the stage. In September, well, just a few weeks ago, we departed for our eighth annual Legacy Genealogy Cruise, where we uh, were going to visit places in Maine, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Massachusetts, as well as uh, New York and New Jersey. And while on board, we had lots of great classes, and especially lots of great food. The day before we left, uh, or the day before I uh, flew out, I wrote this in my uh, farewell blog article. Speaking, so this was part of uh, one of the paragraphs. Speaking of Bar Harbor, Maine, I've just realized that I have four generations of ancestors within an hour's drive of this port. Can you guess what I'll be doing here? I'm sure my wife is just as excited as I am to visit these cemeteries on her vacation. You know, going back, let me just go back one slide here. Um, you know, I've been back to Portland, Maine, and it's a nice place, but I really didn't know what to expect or, or what we would do back there. And so I was thrilled when uh, looking in Legacy, I, I realized that Bar Harbor uh, was close to where many of my ancestors lived. And so uh, using MapQuest, this is the, the map that I pulled up. So uh, here on the right is where we docked. And all the way over here on the left, a place called Belfast or Belfast, um, We've got Sears Port here as well, and, and uh, I noticed Swanville. So uh, lots of my Crosby and Smart and Nickerson ancestors were from this area. And, uh, you know, looking at this map right here, it looked like uh, I could probably fit it into our day's schedule. Most, uh, most importantly, uh, I wanted to learn more about Anna Dunphy and her family as well as uh, Joshua Smart and and their kids, and so uh, looking here in Legacy, you know here uh, Anna died in 1900 in Searsport. Now this is in Waldo County, Maine, and from her obituary I learned that she uh, was buried in East Belfast, and so you know that's that's where uh, this map comes in. So I uh, was excited about this. So uh, back to Legacy here then. If you look at Anna's siblings, you know I learned from her obituary that she had six siblings, and uh, but I haven't since, or I haven't yet uh, identified any of them. So I I was really hoping that I might find some Dunphys in the area, uh, along with my Smarts. And so this is what I printed out. You should on your screen see the family group record here of Joshua Smart and Anna Dunphy, and uh, their nine children that they had together. And so I printed this and uh, and took this with me, and uh, you know if you, if you study it really closely, I know it's a little bit uh, blurry on your screen. I I'm guessing, but uh, people like John Smart, their seventh child, um, was in Belfast, or they were he was married in Belfast, uh, and several of the 
uh, other siblings were from the same area. So what I'm, uh, what you should be seeing on your screen here now is my what my cell phone looked like. So uh, I pulled up my cell phone in uh, when I got off the ship there in Bar Harbor, and uh, with me uh, we rented a minivan, and so I had there it was me and my wife and then two other couples. So Ken, one of uh, Legacy's developers, and Luke, uh, one of uh, Legacy's developers, and both of their wives. So uh, we thought that we'd all go <laughs> cemetery hunting the same day. And, and so using my phone, or my phone's GPS, it led us uh, to East Belfast Cemetery. And when we got to the, the point on my phone where it said we should be there, we were just on, it was, we're on the on the highway and we didn't notice anything but the little dot on my phone it was a little bit off the off the main road and so you know as we went down these pathways we were trying to find uh, the actual cemetery and so this is just a picture of us going in to see if this was the actual place and and uh, we discovered it was and these are my favorite cemeteries ever <clears throat> this was right in the forest uh, and just on the the other end uh, where's my mouse? The the other end down here uh, was the the big body of water there. I don't remember if it's if it was the lake or or which, but um, okay. Kathy's telling me that in Maine we call it Belfast. Okay, that's usually how I say it too. But thanks, Kathy. So, anyways, we had a a wonderful time here in this cemetery, and it was the most fun part of this was seeing uh, Ken get so excited about this. I think this was probably his first excursion going cemetery hunting and he was taking pictures of every single one of these that he could uh, f find and, and some of them had the surname of Brown and so he'd get excited about that. And uh, However, you know, I, I was there looking for Joshua and Anna at Smart and we didn't find anything and so we got back in, in our minivan and uh, this was my question. I was thinking, well, where should we go now? It was about an hour and 15 minutes or so from the ship. And, uh, you know, I really hadn't planned this very well because it was just the day before I had left uh, that I learned where we were going. And so here on my phone, I typed in the word cemetery uh, to just get a list of what cemeteries were nearby. And, and just glancing at this, nothing really seemed like it, it stood out. Uh, so I I put my phone down there on the on the console there next to uh, the driver's seat uh, just to think, and I waited for a minute, and when I picked up my phone, this is the screen that appeared. Now Smart Cemetery wasn't in the list before, and I could not believe what I was seeing. Well, Smart being the surname of of that I was looking for, I thought. Uh, this would be uh, wonderful, so let's go there. So I clicked on the directions button, and it were it was two two and a half miles away. So uh, off we went. So um, here's a, a picture of the of the cemetery, and it was a well, it was a cold, foggy, sometimes rainy day, and and uh, so we just went uh, searching through the cemetery. Now, also with me was Ruth. Now, Ruth is Luke's Luke's wife, and uh, along the way, Ruth was was telling us that she had ancestors from this same area prior to our trip. You know, I didn't have have knowledge of this, and uh, so she had a goal too to go and and find her ancestors. Well, neither one of us, I guess, really knew where to go, but. She was the first to scream. <laughs> she didn't find something scary. She actually found her Nickerson ancestor, and uh, so uh, you know the the first what you know first exciting discovery was her. Thanks to the family's app that I had on my cell phone, I learned that this Benjamin Nickerson, he was my ancestor also. Well, and so uh, Ruth and I, we discovered that we were sixth cousins once removed, and uh, interesting how we found both dead and living relatives in the cemetery. So that was a lot of fun. 
And this is just a picture of of my, the family's app on my on my cell phone. Families uh, is developed by uh, Telgen software, um, which it it sync it works with legacy. So, anyways, uh, I had this out, and and this is how I was uh, trying to, you know, I was using this as I was going through the cemetery. So. As we were just walking around, I unexpectedly also found my sixth great grandparents. Uh, so uh, Joseph Crosby and Ruth. Um, so that was a, a neat thing. I didn't really know what to look for. Of course, I'm still looking for uh, Joshua Smart and Anna. Uh, so yeah, it was fun. Still didn't find them, but Ken, boy, he was really into this. He said, "Let's go find another cemetery." Boy, I, my heart was just melting seeing, you know, him really catch this bug. But we only had about an hour before we had to return to the ship, and so uh, using my cell phone, we found another nearby cemetery. It was the Nickerson Cemetery. So we went up there, and it was uh, beautiful, small, but uh, still no. Joshua or Anna, and so uh, we had one. We had time for one last cemetery, and uh, this is where it gets good. So the Green Lawn Cemetery, I found it here. Uh, found it there on my on my phone. Told me it was in Swanville, and so uh, it it was not too far away. And as I was approaching it, I I missed the first turn. It was it was kind of a big bigger cemetery. I think I may have missed it because everyone in the car was yelling at me to turn. <laughs> so I I took the second turn and boy, you know, I was I don't want to miss my ship uh because there's consequences for that and so I was I was worried about time and so I thought, well, let's just drive up and down and you know, if anything jumps out at me then then we'll stop. Well, about 50 feet in, <laughs> as something in my mind or or something it it told me uh stop so i did uh as i'm telling you this Laura's asking is there an android app yeah families it does work for the android and for the i series devices well and so uh, about 50 feet in something told me to stop well and this is the this is the view from the front of the van where i stopped my wife opens her door, and immediately she asks me, "Is this what you're looking for? You see this little tombstone just to the left of the van? Well, it's a tombstone. Uh, this is the wife of John D. Smart. John was Joshua Smart's son, and Annette. She was on the family group record that I had in my hand, and if." If you look immediately to the left of this tombstone, we find Joshua Smart's tombstone. I'm getting chills here in my arms again just thinking about this. Uh, darn, I wish my eyes were open, but uh, there's his tombstone there on the left and uh, uh, more of a zoomed-in picture here on the right. And you know, using uh, some Photoshop, I've it's getting a little bit better at, at being able to read it all. And so what a happy day this was. And so all of us were having a genealogy happy dance uh, there in the Greenlawn Cemetery in Swanville, Maine. So uh, we had our good time, and but we needed to hurry back to the ship. I couldn't get my phone's GPS to work at that point. So I asked Luke. His was dead. Ken's GPS would not work either. We were on different cell phone networks, and so it wasn't just you know the you know my carrier. Isn't it interesting <laughs> how all of our, uh, how, well, at least how my GPS device led us right to our family cemeteries, and once we were finished, we just didn't seem to need them anymore. It kind of makes me think that our ancestors wanted to be found. And so uh, well, I, I, I could just stop this whole webinar right now and be happy, but, but uh, let's, let's go through the process of what I should do with, uh, with the pictures and the new information that I had now. And so this is how I'm going to do it. Um, all of the pictures that I took, you know, when I connect them to my computer, it just it copies them from my phone to the directory in, uh, for me in the My Pictures directory on my computer. But when I'm, when I'm linking... Uh, adding those pictures to legacy, you know, I want them to be in the in the right place on my computer. And so, uh, I'm going to start out by 
moving the pictures into the right folder, uh, renaming the, the images that I'm going to be using, and then we'll set up the source clipboard. As you've, uh, For those of you that have been with me for the previous uh, Watch Jeff Live webinars, uh, this is the first step. We, we get our source clipboard set up so we can uh, document where we found this information, and then we'll add all of the new information, names, dates, places, parents, and so on. Once we add the information, we'll paste the contents of the source clipboard. And I'm going to start out with uh, using uh, Annette Smart's tombstone, and uh, and then we'll we'll uh, do this with a tombstone uh, from Find a Grave. And I'm uh, hoping to show you also how to upload uh, a new entry up to Find a Grave. And Janet or Janet is saying uh, this is hilarious. This webinar is so fitting. Being so close to Halloween, I guess I hadn't thought of that, Jan uh, Janet. Uh, but all along, do you, do you see right here where this is live, unscripted, unplanned? Uh, this is this is real research. I guess I'm, I'm inviting you to sit here with me today and uh, just watch me going through my normal process of what I would normally do. I guess there's a little bit more pressure on me here with nearly a thousand of you uh, having signed up for this today. And so, you know, if there's something that I might overlook, uh, maybe send me a note here in, in your chat area. But because this is going to um, just be, a, you know, a watch Jeff Live, the level of expertise I'm going to uh, suggest would be probably at the intermediate towards the advanced levels. But so for those beginners out there, don't let that uh, scare you away, uh, because you'll at least know what's possible in legacy for when you're ready for it. Okay, um, I I'm, am recording this, and if all goes well, then uh, you'll be able to watch this again later. If you want to get down all of the step-by-step -step, uh, instructions uh, from the recording, uh, uh, feel free to do that. Okay, okay, and Claire, I'm going to answer your question uh, right here at the very beginning as to uh, what folder do I put my headstone picks in. So uh, that will lead us right into. Uh, where I'm going with this. So I'm going to switch over to legacy. So here I am in my, this is my live real uh, database right now. So these are my fifth great grandparents. Well, it looks like for Joshua, he's also something else. Do you see that little plus sign next to his relationship? If you, if you, if you see a plus sign next to that, that means that you're related to that person in more than one way. And to see what the other relationships are, you just right click on that plus sign and then click on View Additional Relationships. And let's see, it looks like he is also my second cousin six times removed, second cousin seven times removed, my half third cousin six times removed, and, and so on. It looks like down here at the bottom I had also limited this to just showing me just my f first five closest. Uh, but you can um, you know, look down here and, and you can trace my side, or you can start out with this person and eventually you get back to the same uh, set of common parents. Anyways, uh, click on print and that shows you a nice uh, chart of how uh, the various ways that you're related to that person. Regardless, that's not uh, part of, well, this is live and unscripted, so anyways, that's where that led me. So, I've got these pictures. Uh, when I got home a couple of weeks ago, I plugged my uh, phone into my computer and let me take you now to where all of those pictures went, and then I'll show you the first thing that I would do. Now, before I proceed any further, let me uh, just give this fine print. I guess uh, what you're show, what you're seeing me do here today. I'm 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 not uh, standing here or sitting here saying you must do it my way or you're doing it wrong. Uh, don't don't take what I'm saying like that. But hopefully, you might get one or two uh, new ideas that you can. Um, apply to your own research. Okay, so I'm going to open up my uh, my Windows Explorer, which I could do by trying to find the My Computer icon, or what I like to do is just on my keyboard, there's a Windows button, and then I'll so I'll push that, and I'll push the letter E at the same time, and that just opens up your. Oh, it went over to my other monitor. Just a second here. <laughs> Let me move move that over here. Here we go. A lot of you know I use two 28-inch widescreen monitors, and boy, I can't go, I'd never go back to anything else. All right. So uh, here's the uh, 
Windows Explorer, I can see I've got three different drives here. Well, I, I've learned that when I uh, load the computer, the, the pictures from my camera, it puts them in the My Pictures folder. And so I'll just go there. And here I've got them all uh, you know, sorted by, by the date that, where, that I import them. So I want to scroll down here to October 2nd and open up that folder. So this is October 2nd, uh, 2011, and this is uh, all of the pictures in that folder. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Hopefully this is coming through uh, well on your computers. Okay, and they're all in chronological order here based on how, uh, you know, when I took them. And so as I scroll down here, this is the very first picture. I guess I can make these a little bit bigger. Go to extra large icons. Oh, and they are extra large, so I, let's scroll down. Okay, here we go. Yeah, Claire, this is, uh, this is Windows 7 that I'm using. Okay, so there's the first picture, and then uh, these are the pictures that I took in the order that I took them. And what I want to do is I want to grab all of those pictures. Looks like right here the picture of the van is the last one that I took. So let's make those a little bit smaller so you can see what I'm going to be doing with them. Okay, so I'm going to click on the first one, and then I'm going to press the Shift button on my keyboard, and while I'm doing that, I'll click on the last one, and do you see how that highlights all of those pictures in between? Okay, now I want to copy these pictures into the place where I um, store all of my genealogy uh, photos and documents. So I'm going to press Control C on my keyboard, and now they're they're copied. Now I'm going to go over to my C drive, and most of you have, will put your pictures in the Legacy folder, right? So you'll open up Legacy, and you'll go into Pictures, and that's where you'll store your pictures. Um, I guess, and, and that's that's good. I would recommend that you do that. So everything is within one master subfolder. Um, I guess I. From the very beginning, I've just I've got a folder here called Genealogy Photos Pictures that I've got here just on my on the root of my C drive, and so uh, for now I'm going to just uh, put them where I'm used to putting them. So let me open up Genealogy Photos Pictures, the folder that I created oh a long time ago, and I've this is really divided into my the organizational system that I have here is kind of divided into two different sections. And if you study the Family History Library Catalog, or it's now been renamed as the Family Search Catalog up at FamilySearch.org, you'll notice that most of their holdings is uh, the, they're organized the same way. Either you'll find what you're looking for by locality, or you'll find them by uh, you know surname. And so I've set up my digital organizational system much the same way. So if I'm looking for something at the Family History Library, oh, I could, I could find it in much the same folder structure that I'm setting up here. So that's a little bit, I mean, we could have a whole webinar just on that. But, uh, so I'll go into uh, the USA country, and this was in Waldo County, Maine. So I've already created these folders previously. So I'll go into Maine, and here's Waldo County. And this cemetery was in Swanville. So I'll open it up. These are the documents that I already have in Swanville. But you know, I really I want to remember that those pictures um, were all part of the Green Lawn Cemetery. And so I'm going to create a brand new folder just for Green Lawn Cemetery. And let's open that up. And now I'm going to paste those pictures. Okay. There they are. Aren't they wonderfully named? Can you all immediately tell what they are? Oh, no. Here's the, the preview of them anyways. Okay, so my pictures are now in the right place, but I'm going to be working with, I'm going to be working with this one right here. Okay, this is the one that you, uh, you have all printed out so you can follow along. Uh, but my next step is to rename the image. This is not going to do any damage to the image. Some of you have heard about JPEGs, and there's issues with that. Uh, that's for another discussion. But um, I'm going to rename this, and I'll call this Annette Smart, and I'll just say Tombstone. Uh, you can do 
uh, name it to whatever you want. Um, just my personal general rule of thumb is the more you put in there, the better. You try not to abbreviate things. Um, and I would go through and, and rename each of these uh, appropriately. But uh, today we're just going to be working with Annette Smart, her tombstone. Now I've set the stage. I've got everything ready so I can now start uh, start doing uh, data entry and legacy. Yeah, Paul is asking, no, uh, she says, no spaces. Uh, yeah, there's a space here in between the comma and Annette, so that one, that should be fine. Um, looks like Denise is suggesting that I could click on each photo, and at the bottom of the screen I have an option to tag the photograph. And, yeah, there's there's more that you can do with this. Um, and Paula, uh, you know, Paula's asking a good question. By having spaces in the name of the file, will that be a problem in making web pages from legacy? Uh, Sherry or Brian, could you uh, comment on that? Maybe uh, find Paula's question there in your list and uh, reply to everyone uh, with your response there. Thank you. Okay, so let's uh, head back over to legacy now. And uh, Annette Smart was John D. Smart's spouse, so let's click on him. Uh, her maiden name was Stinson. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I want to make this bigger here, so on my screen, I know what I, I guess I haven't printed this out a, ahead of time. So, th what are we going to do now? So, this uh, we're going to take this information and add it into Legacy. But before you start, um, you know, adding new information to Legacy, let's get the source clipboard set up. Okay. Now, for those of you that are new to the source clipboard, first let me click on Annette's screen to open her up here. Uh, the source clipboard are these buttons over here. Normally, you could well, you could easily go and add the the source of this tombstone by clicking on the source button here and going through a bunch of clicks. Well, we're going to do that by using the source clipboard. So it, it, it here in a few minutes, it uh, it will you'll be able to just paste this on any new piece of information that you type in without having to go through the, all the clicking that you would go through up here. Okay, okay. So let's open up the source clipboard. And it looks like, well, the last thing that I was doing with the source clipboard was uh, 1911 census. Oh, this was for our last our last webinar on adding a census record. That's fine. We we'll just uh, replace this. So step one says click here to select or change the master source to site. So let's do that. And before I would go in and just add a brand new master source. You know, I want to check my master source list here to see if I've already typed in uh, the Green Lawn Cemetery uh, previously. And so, because and I've talked about how I've organized my master source list here with you in the past. But um, so let's uh, just start typing in Maine. Go down to Waldo County, and if you look at Swanville, here I've just got four master sources, and none of them they don't appear to uh, have anything to do with a, a cemetery so this is fine so now I'll go ahead and um, create a new master source you, you see all of these master sources here they do not have the little uh, bullet in front of them that means that these were created using legacy's old um, the normal uh, source system prior to version 7 um, okay so let's click on the add button and uh, again, I'm just just doing this live, and so I'm just going to talk my way through this. Now, when I'm doing this by myself without you, I I don't talk out loud, <laughs> so this is a it's a bit different doing it this style. But nonetheless, let's go. So cemetery records, and then uh, you have a couple of questions to answer here. So you would you would go through this list and just pick the one that looks like it. Um, makes the most sense and I think in this case this last one does so I'll click on it and it looks like there's a sub question and in this case I'm going to select grave markers uh, rural that's a hard word to say but I did it without uh, you know I don't have the actual latitude longitude coordinates for each um, picture that I took I boy I, I wish I my camera had that built in, but I'll get that sometime. So let's pick this one. No more questions to answer, so now let's go 